现在就诶热烈的来欢迎巴斯卡的来给我们唱的。Thank you. Uh, I uh, use them. Oh, yeah. uh, hello. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me here. Also, uh, Ron and uh, Bia to uh, help me. And I want to thank also already Johnny because he is going to translate. I know it's a very hard job uh, to do that uh, in Chinese. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak. Uh, only speak English, I think French a little bit, uh, but my uh, native language is uh, Dutch uh, because I'm from Belgium and the Flemish part in Belgium. Hello, 大家。Hello， 大家好。那我非常高兴可以今天受邀来这边跟大家演讲。那特别要感谢呃丽雅与我联络，然后也很感谢 Johnny 今天在这边帮我翻译。那因为要把今天的演讲翻成中文是相当的困难。那我很抱歉，我并不会说中文，然后英文肯定也说得不太好。那我的母语基本上是呃，我会说一点点法文。那我母语基本上是荷兰文。那我的呃算是比利时、波兰民地区的人，所以呃主要是以法呃主要也是以荷兰文为主。Um, maybe practical. I prepared a lecture of an hour, but with translation, it's maybe a little bit longer, uh, of course. Uh, but if you want, uh, please, uh, if you have questions, immediately interrupt me. Ask questions uh, uh, that we can have also a dialogue. No. 基本上我准备的演讲大概是一个小时的时间，那加加上口译的时间可能会让整个演讲变得更长。但是如果大家有问题的话，可以随时提出来，那我们可以开始呃开启不一样的讨论。Uh, and I prepared for uh, today and tomorrow two lectures, and I will a uh, little bit say a little bit about uh, the background of these lectures before I start, just that you understand a little bit the relationship and the context also of those uh, lectures. 呃，基本上我准备了今天跟明天的两场演讲。那在整场演讲开始之前，我可能会解释一下今天与明天的演讲之间的关联性。Um, so today I will speak more about,、uh, let's say, art in society and how artists are related to society、uh, and politics. And tomorrow I will go more in depth into、uh, artistic careers, how they develop.、Uh, Um, so I, I, I will focus more, much more on、uh, how you can develop、uh, what I call a sustainable、uh, creative career. 呃，今天的话，我主要会专注在讲艺术以及社会之间的关系。那我们也会讲说，整个艺术家可能他们会遇到的呃，人生政治呃一些政治的的问题。那明天的话，会更深入的来谈艺术家的职业方面的呃会遇到的挑战，以及我们要怎么样去发展一个更为永续的呃创意的职业。And、uh, maybe also good to know is.、Uh, As a researcher, I'm based in Antwerp. That's the city of Belgium. But that means also、uh, that everything what I say, and also the research what I do, is most of the time based on Europe、uh, and has a European、uh, perspective. So I'm very curious to have feedback from you also to to hear your perspective on this European perspective, and which can be quite different, I think. 基本上我是住在这个安特卫普，然后安呃安特卫普啊，安特卫普是比利时的一个城市。那在我们当地，那我在我自己所做的演讲都是以呃所做的演讲以及研究都是以欧洲为主。那我可能是从主要从一个欧洲的观点出发。那我觉得今天是非常幸运的。那我自己也非常的好奇，就是说我来这边，这个从这边跟大家从亚洲的观点来看，会有什么样的不一样？那我们可以有不一样的讨论。And、uh, the lecture of today is、uh, based on, on three researches、uh, I did in the past. 那今天的研究主要会呃也会从另外三个学者的角度出发。In which we work with um, um, an, inter an interdisciplinary、uh, research team, in which are artists involved, but also philosophers, economists. Policy experts, um, um, lawyers,、uh, etc. So we work with together with、uh, at this moment with 13 people, 
uh, and we do um, yeah, collective research, so we exchange a lot of uh, uh, information, but from different perspectives of disciplines, like economy, politics, uh, I'm a sociologist. 那我们整个今天的发表的内容主要有我们是有一个研究团队那这个研究团队是非常跨领域的我们包括里面有艺术家然后有哲学家有经济学家有政策的研究学者那也有律师整个团队总共可以说是有十三个人那我们是用非常多
doesn't have a banner, he doesn't uh, shout things, he's just standing there still and looking at uh, Atatürk, which is hanging there at, at uh, the Koto Center. 那对我来我觉得这种抗议的方式其实非常的特别因为它其实没有特别的做什么事情没有特别的一个符号可以来代表它做的事情因为它不像其他的抗议人士或者是行动人士激进人士会进行一些可能会拿一些标语或者是有
。那这本书我大概两三年前读到的，那但是这本书其实是一本非常老的书，它是在一九七零年的时候发行的。那一九七零年刚好是我出生的那一年。那我觉得它里面谈到的这个关于城市以及城市组织的方式是，我觉得非常有趣。So and uh, uh, Richard Sennett starts his analysis quite blunt. He says, in fact, he says. How our societies are organized nowadays, and especially how we organize our cities, has a has a, a kind of effect uh, on people. And this effect is that people stay all their life in their adolescence. So he says cities are organized in that way that people don't grow up anymore. Again, 1970 is describing this. He said they stay all in the uh, uh, in the adolescence, and this is no problem when you are 16, 17 years old. So, uh, 17 years old, uh, but this is a huge problem when you have the age of trouble. 那所以就是这个学者，当他提出了，他非常直直白的坦率的说，我们现在整个世界，那他在当时一九七零年组织城市的方式，其实是非常的不成熟，然后也一直让我们的城市维持在一个所谓的青少年时期的状态。那就是呃，但是实际上整个城市应该是要有更呃更成熟的发展，然而我们一直待在呃更一直待在青少年时期是不该呈现的状态。那。如果是十六、十七岁，大概现在的时期，那可能是可以。那可是如果今天是已经是一个成年人，但是还是维持在一个一直呃青少年时期的心态，那这样子就是呃不太合理的状态。And he defines、uh, adolescence as somebody who is、uh, searching for、uh, her or his identity. It's typical when you're sixteen years old that you're searching for your identity,、uh, but、uh, you do this by being very principled. Uh, by getting very stiff, also sometimes aggressive to others, especially your parents.、Uh, but it is a way to confirm, in a very、uh, principal way, your identity. That, 什么是所谓的青少年时期这种状态？那青少年时期的时候，我们大概十六、十七岁开始，我们就一直持续的在寻找自我认同。那会是使用一种非常。呃，遵守纪律的，然后遵守来自于父母的命令的方式，然后持续的在找寻对自己的认同，了解自己的身份。So typical for adolescents, Richard Sennett says, is that they try try in a way to defend very of, of,、uh, offensive their own identity by being principled. And again, this is not a problem when you're sixteen, seventeen years old, but this is a problem when you have the age of twelve. 那所以。这个理查德斯奈特他就说，在的确在青少年时期的时候，我们就会有这样子的呃表表示非常呃表现的非常的遵守纪律，然后一直的在保护自己的身份，然后表示表保护自己的认知的身份，然后在十六十七岁的时候或许是可以接受的行为，但是呃如果随着年纪增长，可能就不是那么适合。Then the question、uh, Richard Sennett asks is, how does it come that people don't grow up anymore? Uh, and he says this comes because how our cities are organized, and they are organized in、uh, communities which are all the same. So、uh, they are organized with the the same identity. That means literally th- you have here a bird view of Paris,、uh, part of Paris, of course. That means literally how those cities are organized is that every region or every district. Has its own ethnical culture or social class,、uh, so you have really homogeneous communities organized、uh, in the city, and those lanes you see are in fact the borders between those different communities. But you have communities organized、uh, with the same identity. Identity means also in Latin sameness. Now, why do our cities have no people in them? 就就不会再成长。那主要是因为我们组织整个城市的方式，就是我们可以看到这是一个法国部分区域的鸟瞰图。那从这个图上的话，我们可以看到上面有很多的线条，然后分区分出很多的区域。那基本上这些区域就是作为一个边界，那是呃所谓的种族的边界或者是社会阶层的边界。那在每一个区域之内。呃，里面所居住的人就是同质性是非常高，那他们有相同的呃自我认同，那他们是是有呃同样的认知，所以他们才会被归类在同一个区域之内。然后呃 ，identity 这个字在英文里面是作为身份的意思，那在这个拉丁文里面就是
有同样同质性单一的意思。And this was organized by,、uh, for example, in Paris by Baron Haussmann, who,、uh, who made uh, consciously uh, uh, cities like that. He planned it like that. And this was uh, uh, copied for many cities、uh, later on. 那这个是法国的都市学者，那奥斯曼他创造出来的设计城市的方式。那他他他做了这样子的设计，那之后其他很多城市也都来争相效仿。So、uh, the point of which Richard Sennett makes is people stay or stick, get stick in their adolescence; they don't grow up anymore because they live in those closed, gated. Uh, communities with the same、uh, identity. 那所以理查森理查德森奈特他所提出的就是为什么城市的人都会一直持续的维持在他们的心智是青少年时期，那就是因为他们都待在这样子非常封闭而且通知性非常高的区域之内。And he says this is very problematic in that sense、uh, that people in such cities have not the opportunity anymore to、uh, meet. Other people,、uh, and especially other people of different opinions, but also which have a completely other、uh, lifestyle, for example,、uh, but also don't meet strange things anymore, like art pieces, etc. And that's why he says we need in our cities. He may mention this word in, in the 1970s. We need more anarchy in our cities, or we need more disorder in our cities,、uh, uh, especially to avoid. Uh, or to give the people again the possibility to grow up and to get over their adolescence. 那所以理查德奈特认为这样是非常有问题的，因为这样住在每一个区域的人们，他们没有机会去,去遇到不一样的人，然后拥有不同的看法与态度的人，或者是不同生活习惯的人啊、呃，也没有机会遇到可能很让他们会让他们感到奇怪的事情。所以就在一九七零年的时候，他就已经提出说。呃，我们需要有失序，或者需要有无政府的状态，让人们有机会去成长。So what he's、uh, literally saying is, we need more public spaces in the city, but those pu-、uh, are public spaces which are much more chaotic, which are not so well organized with different communities uh, uh, with the same identity, and、uh, exactly in those spaces, those different communities can meet each other, and this is very important. 那所以。呃，学者就提出说，我们需要有更多的公众空间。那这些公众空间不是已经组织好、安排好的公众空间，而是让不同的族群有机会可以在这样子的空间里面相遇，然后呃进行对话。So in a way, as we need to, uh, uh, in a way, we need to disrupt those communities,、uh, break them open again,、uh, get them out of their comfort zones. 所以我们要去呃。打搅每一个不同的族群，然后让他们离开属于自己的舒适圈。And now comes for me the most interesting point in this in this book. He says, why do we have to do this? So why do we need more anarchy in the city? We need more disorder in the city. Places of disorder, because when you、um, don't organize your city like that, that there is. That there are places where you can meet extreme or radical、uh, other people,、uh, other things, etc. When you don't do this, you、uh, get in fact as a result this violence. 好，那所以在这个书中，我认为最有趣的部分就是他提到说，如果我们没有这些失序或者没有无政府的这样子的地区，让他们产生这个小型的冲突的话，那我们可能就会终将。是会导致像这样子大型的暴力情形。So that's that's the quite、uh, paradoxical reasoning of Richard Sennett in that sense that he says we need more chaotic places,、uh, more places of uh, uh, conflict even、uh, where conflict is possible to avoid this kind of violent、uh, riots or eruptions which take place every three four years in the city. 那所以这这个部分其实是非常的矛盾，因为我们要持续的去寻找冲突，然后来避免大型的暴力行动。那其实这样子的暴力行动是在欧洲大概呃每三四年就会发生。Uh, for me, this is interesting. I could this is a picture of London. I think 2009, if I'm right. 
but I could show you pictures of uh, the suburbs in Paris, uh, in my own town, uh, Antwerp, we have every three years at one street, always this kind of uh, 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 violence. Um, I could show you pictures of the Netherlands, uh, uh, where it happens every two or three years. But I show exactly this picture uh, because of the Billy, Billy Idiot uh, in front of it. Now and what you in fact see is is that what you see is literally the flip side also of the creative city. Uh, so in, in the 90s, mayors of cities start in a conscious way to develop creative cities, creative districts in their cities etc. But at the same, the same time when uh, this creative industry policy uh, was developed by mayors, at the same time you get uh, an, um, a growing, um, growing violence, growing riots in, those, in the same cities. Kaiser so and this is for me quite interesting that you see uh, at the same time development of creative cities and uh, the growing of uh, violence in the street. And when this happens, uh, you get people uh, like him. Uh, I, I show him because it was at the moment that the rights were that he was uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, of the UK. This is Cameron. And for me, it's very interesting. I could show also pictures of Sarkozy in that time, uh, uh, Rutten in the Netherlands, uh, Prime Minister, etc. Because they do all the same. And uh, uh, what is interesting for me is their analysis of those kinds of rights. They do, in fact, two things in the analysis. One is always using this very interesting word and keep this in mind. The saying this. This, this violence which happens there in the streets is senseless. So they talk about senseless violence, but it's quite ambivalent if they think this violence which happens in the streets is senseless, or if they themselves cannot make sense of the violence in the streets. So this kind of knowledge, this notion of senseless violence is used also in mainstream newspapers, etc. Very ambivalent. 那我给大家看到的这张图片，那当时就是在2009年的时候，就是。有像这样子的人就站出来他们认为这些暴力行为是没有意义，还是他们其实没有办法理解这些暴力行为之中的意义？那所以我们的他当时的主流媒体上面也同样的都转载了这个字眼。So the first analysis what they might make is based on this this idea of senselessness, and the second analysis they make is using the moral figure, uh, saying for example, or are you today have no values and norms again? Uh, anymore, we have to uh, 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 go for citizen, active citizenship, for example. Big society was a Ross's word, so bring in values again. So this means moralizing the problem which happens in the street. 
第一点就是他提他们提出了这无意义的字眼。那第二点，他们的分析之中就是都有这个，都有这个这个道德的手指。那什么是道德的手指？就是他们比出来认为说，现在的城市已经失去了道德以及价值观。那所以我们应该要推广、推动，呃。呃，人民行使公民权，然后我们要重新复兴我们的大城市，让我们有一个新的价值观以及新的道德，让大家去遵循。And by moralizing it, it means also that they in fact uh, uh, individualize the problem. That means they say to those people who uh, do the senseless violence in the street, it's their responsibility, it's their own individual responsibility. Uh, because they have the wrong morals, the wrong values, etc. So it's also individualizing the problem. 那所以在他们提出了这个道德的手指，将道德加注到这些行为上面的时候，其实某种程度上是在推卸他们的责任。他们认为这些责任都是归咎于这些行使暴力的人，认为他们没有价值，没有道德，所以才会造就这样子的情形出现。And what the, uh, when this happens, from the other side or on the other hand. Uh, we see uh, standing up an old army of intellectuals, philosophers, sociologists, who uh, also point with a uh, finger, but with another finger, and uh, uh, they say, no, 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 the problem is not an individual problem, it's not a moral problem, it has to do with structural things, for example, the crisis. Uh 在与此同时，就有这样子的政客出现，有这样子的政治学家，就有这样子的政治人物出现。那另外也有一群的哲学家、经济学家，他们站出来，然后比出他们手指说，这些问题其实并不出于不，并不在于个人，也不在于所谓的道德或价值观，而是在于整个结构上面的问题。Okay, this is Sigmund Bauman. Uh, it's a, uh, he passed away two years ago, but a sociologist、uh, in UK. 那这是英国的社会学家，他大概两年前去世。这个齐格蒙·鲍曼。But again, what is interesting is that I say no, the, the problem is not individual, individual. It's not a moral problem. It is a structural problem, and it has to do with,、uh, it has all to do with social and economical inequality. 那所以这些，他认为这些问题并不非，并非是个人或价值观或道德问题，而是整个呃社会的结构。那包括我们会看到的是社会以及经济上面的不平等所以引发的问题。So what they say is that the reason、uh, of this kind of senseless violence is structural. It's based on inequality, and there are also it's also proven a lot of.、Uh, Empirical studies of sociologists show that in societies, when the gap between rich and poor and poor people grow, between in the creative city, between the hipsters and poor people who clean, etc., in the city, when this gap grows, also violence grows. 那所以他们就提出，这是结构性的，是不平等所引发的问题。那不止他们提出了这样子的论点，同时他们也进行了实证研究，去证实这件事情其实真实在发生。那他们去研究说，所以这些创意区域他们的呃贫富差距的增长，以及包括就是可以看到这些西皮市以及当地打扫的那些工人他们的的收入以及他们的所受到的待遇的差距，那就同样的也是可以看到这些差距的增长也带来了暴更多的暴力。So my point is, in a way, in this analysis of those sociologists, philosophers, etc., is is、uh, quite right. But、uh, in our research, we came up、uh, with other findings that there is missing something in their analysis. 那所以这些我们可以看到，这些哲学家跟经济学家或许他们提出的这些内容是相对枯燥。那可是我们也可以从他们的研究之中，我们找到了另外一些值得探讨的点。And this has to do with with、uh, the findings,、uh, especially we have in in Europe and especially in Belgium, where I'm from, that we see in countries which are doing very well, where the、uh, gap between rich and poor is not that big. And where there is a, a, a growing welfare state, a growing economy,、uh, where people、um, are doing economically very well, there is a totally other kind of senseless violence、uh, growing, and that's what I call the senseless violence to the self.
。那我们我们在做的这个发现另外一个点，就是我们在比利时、欧洲当地所做的研究，就是我们可以看到有一些呃贫富差距并非是那么大的区域的时候，那还是会有呃另外一种的呃这个无意义的暴力行为出现。那这种无意义的暴力行为是针对自己发生的。So in 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 uh, well-doing economical uh, countries, uh, we see that uh, depression grows, increases, uh, increases. Sorry, um, burnouts increases and uh, suicides uh, um, increases. Especially, for example, in in Belgium, we see especially uh, with uh, um, women. Who make a very good career between the 30, uh, 35 years old and 45 years old, they have this, uh, the highest suicide uh, uh, number uh, of of uh, all the country. So it uh, are exactly people who are doing very well, build up a career, successful career, who get depressed and ask themselves, what is the sense of this all? What I'm doing? And so it's also a question of sense making. Uh, 所以我们的研究可以看到，说即便是在这样子所谓的幸福城市之中，那每一个人还是有呃非常大的压力，他们可能有过劳的状况，那也有很多的自杀的情形出现。那特别是在我们比利时的话，我们可以看到，在三十五岁到四十五岁的这些拥有呃非常好的职业生活的女性，那她们却有拥有最高的自杀率。那即便他们他们好像生活得很好，但是他们却有,有这个压忧郁症出现的情形。那他们也是就是探就是去探究，就开始会去想说，究竟我活着或者这么努力工作的意义究竟是什么？那我们一样又重新回到意义这个问题上面。So and this is of course something what we all know, uh, what is said also in, in uh, uh, what ordinary people say, money does not make happy. 那这就是我们大家众所皆知的，就是其实金钱并不会带来快乐。Or the、uh, general development project does not equal the general happiness project。那所以我们的城市发展计划也并不是会在不是什么幸福城市计划。So my point is that the structural analysis again about the,、uh, inequality is is、uh, empirically correct, but there is missing something to Explain exactly where this kind of senseless violence comes from. 那所以这种这个结构性的的研的实证研究，那可能是有呃在实证上面是有正确的，但是它其实中间是有一些缺失。那一样就是没有办法解释说这些暴力行为其实是呃有其他原因存在。So the question is, what is what is the missing link in this analysis? 那所以究竟我们要提出的问题就是说，究竟这个中间遗失的是什么 ？And this missing link is culture. 那所以我们发现遗失的东西就是文化。And I try to explain now、uh, uh, later on what this culture means for me, but、uh, until now it's enough to say that culture is for me in fact a huge bot in which meanings are put in, and you can take all this bot. Meanings to、uh, to signify yourself. So it is a lot of signs,、uh, signification to signify yourself, and that's what culture、uh, is for us. 那这边我待会可能会再更深入的来探讨究竟文化是什么东西。那但是对我而言的话，我会认为文化是的一整箱的，那有具有象征意义的东西。然后我们会取出这些象征意义，然后来解释自己存在的意义究竟是什么。And that was exactly, for example, what we saw also in、uh, in Antwerp and my town, when there were riots、uh, between、uh, youngsters, especially、uh, for、uh, migrant youngsters, and、uh, discussion、uh, was there between them and the mayor of the town. That the mayor said to them, "But I, I give free education to you. I make jobs, jobs, jobs for you,、uh, and still you are fighting in the streets." And their answer was yes, but we are not recognized, or we don't feel recognized、uh, as a culture、uh, in the city. And this is exactly what I mean by signification:、uh, that culture can give you meaning to your own life,、uh, can recognize you. 那就如同在我们的城市里面，有的时候有一些年轻人出来，然后有暴动的状况出现，那我们的市长就跳出来跟。
这个年轻人喊话，就是说我让大家都有免受免费的教育，然后每一个人都有工作，为什么你们还要跳出来抗争？那这些年轻人就会说，我们即便有工作，即便即便是有免费教育，我们还是没有觉得受到认同。那所以他们没有认为他们在文化里面有的特定的意义或者是意味存在，所以他们认为找不到属于自己的意义。And now I come more and more to the relationship to art. Uh, what art does, since modernity at least, is in fact uh, bringing new signs or new meanings to this big bot which is culture. So I see culture in the anthropological sense. It's, a, it's the possibility to give meaning to yourself. And art is uh, something to bring something innovative to it, a new meaning in it. So it, uh, it, uh, it makes culture dynamic. 那这就与艺术其实是息息相关，因为艺术其实是可以带来呃许多新的意义。那所以这就是带来一种让我们刚刚这个箱子里面可以带来新的元素，然后它让整个文化变得非常具有动态性，然后具有流动性。So I uh, try to explain now a little bit more in depth what, what I mean by culture and also I try to explain what the relationship between culture in this broad sense uh, and art is. So I will talk more about culture and the relationship between culture and art. So as I said already, culture, I define culture in the, in the, in the broadest Anthropological sense, culture means just a way of life. 那就如同我刚刚所说的，用广义的角度来讲的话，我们认为文化就是一种生活的方式。So that means, for example, that I eat every morning three cups of coffee before I start working. That's culture. 那基本上就是，像是我每天早上起来需要喝三杯咖啡，那这就是文化的一种。But、uh, to to describe this more in,、uh, more in detail. I think it's very important to think about this idea of giving meaning to it. So it's giving meaning to your own existence. Uh, is, uh, so culture is, the, and, and that's for me very important. Culture is the only thing, the only thing, which gives meaning to yourself. Uh, it's, it's a toolbox you, you can use to give meaning to yourself, or meaning to the social context in which you're living, your society in which you're living. So it is. Uh, uh, Toolbox of giving meaning. 那基本上我认为这是非常重要的，就是刚刚提到的，就是文化是赋予人以意义。那不只是赋予自己意义，那也同时的是赋予人在社会里面生存的时候赋予意义。So and this is this is very I think fundamental uh, the function of culture and this uh, an analysis I did not make uh, in the first place. For example, Sigmund Freud talks about this, but also um, uh, the, the German philosopher uh, Martin Heidegger. Uh, he answers, for example, the question to the question, why do we have culture? He answers this question with uh, the German phrase, Zeim zum Tode. And now I translate it in English. Zeim zum Tode means we have culture, Heidegger says, because. We know we are going to die. <笑>那这个基本上，这个这样子的说法并不是我最先提出来的，而是过去有许多学者都有提出来。那其中一位，这个海德格，他他就就是有人问他说，为什么我们会有，我们需要有文化？那他就是提出说，我们有文化是因为我们知道将来我们终将一死。And, and this is crucial, I think, because you know, of course, when you know, and this knowing is very important, when you know you're going to die, you, of course, ask yourself the question, what I'm doing here? And then starts the process of sense making. So this is very important. We know that we are going to die. So we start to ask, what am I doing now? And then we start to think, we start to think about the meaning of the meaning. So I know I go from this broader anthropological definition of culture more and more to look at how cultural actors, cultural institutions, but also artists, which role they play in this culture. 那从我们这个广义的这个定义来，那我们可以更进一步的来看说，究竟这些呃。
其实文化的人，包括我们这些艺术家或者是艺术的机构，他们究竟与这之间有什么样的关联 ？And when you look at、uh, this more analytically, you can uh, uh, distinct uh, uh, three different functions. 那当我们用分析的角度来看的时候，我们可以发现说文化有三个呃主要的功能。And the first function, what cultural actors, so cultural institutions, I mean museums,、uh, theaters, but also even education, what they do. The first function is socialization. Socialization means that you integrate people in a social order without questioning the social order. 那基本上我们这一些呃艺术家，那主要是艺术的机构，像我主要想要讲的是像博物馆啊，或者是电影院，或者是歌剧院或者学校。那我们在做的事情，第一个功能就显现就是社会化。那所谓的社会化，就是呃将人提升至可以呃融入整个社会的规则之中，然后但前提是不去质疑整个社会的规则。So it's for example saying to people, those are all values and norms. And one you want to survive in our society, one you want to find a job in our society, etc. You have to follow those values and norms without questioning them. 那我们就会说，呃，这边就是我们的社会规范以及价值。那所以，如果你想要在这个社会里面生存，想要找到工作的话，那你就不能去质疑这些规范或者价值，然后才有办法顺利的在这个社会之中生存。So also a lot of Social design, but also community art, is exactly trying to do this. A lot of community artists are trying to um, uh, integrate people in a society uh, in a、uh, in a specific social order, also, which is already existing, and which they, in fact, by doing this integration, confirm the social order. 呃，所以我们就可以谈及有许多的社会规划以及社群的艺术，其实都是一直在做这件事情，就是希望能够将呃人们带提升至一个可以融入整个社会的规则里面。那这社会规则其实都是既有已经存在的，那只是借由这样子的呃艺术的形式，然后再次去确信确立这些规则的存在。A second function is qualification。那第二个功能是资格化。So that means also in every culture you have actors again institutions artists um, commissions uh, cultural commissions for example which make a hierarchy they say for example this has more quality than that this for example the art historical canon as a typical thing in which you say these are the artworks which we think is top. Uh, is, is the best, etc., for society. But also qualification means also, like I, as a professor, when I give grades to my students, say this is paper gets more grades than that grades. Always a process of qualification. So making hierarchies in values and norms is a second function、uh, cultural actors do in society. 那第二个资格化的部分就是一样，我们会提到说，就是包括我们的艺术家、艺术的机构。那更重要的是，我们有所谓的呃一些机构或者是这些艺术家，然后我们会去想要制造出阶层。那所谓的阶层，就是让我们去评断，有有一个基准去评断说，什么样的呃艺术是最好的，什么样的艺术是次级的。那包括像我自己是教授，就会给予这个学生的的。作业评分，那就说这个分数比较好，这个、分数比较差，那就是我们要去呃区分出每一个，区分出等级，然后给予他们不同的资格。And the last one is、uh, subjectification. Subjectification means for me when you、uh, are hit in the face. Hit in the face. Yeah, hit in the face. 呃，那第三个就是主体化。那所谓的主体化，就是基本上对我来讲就是呃。So what what I mean by this, of course, I use it as a metaphor. But to me, what I mean by this is that you are confronted with yourself. For example,、uh, when you have a marriage,、uh, when you have a divorce after ten years marriage, or for me, more interesting is when you have a new girl, a new boyfriend、uh, for three months. You have always this moment when you say, "Oh, who am I in this relationship?" 
。那基本上我这个是是一个比喻的方式。那究竟这个比喻是要说什么的？就是说，呃，比如说我如果今天是结婚十年，然后突然突然离婚，或者是我交了一个新的男女朋友，大概交了三个月的时间，然后我就开始跳出来问自己说，哎、欸，我怎么会做这件事情？ And this is exactly what subjectification is. It means literally that you start questioning your own subject. 那这就是所谓的主体化的的意义，那就是我们开始问自己问题。But that means also that you start uh, analyzing, at least reflecting, and questioning also the whole socialization process. 那所以我们就会开始去分析，然后去反思，然后去。了解整个我们社会化的过程。You start to really ask the question: What I'm doing in the social order? Is this a social correct order which I'm positioned in? 那所以我们就会提出问题，说我是不是在这个社会的规则里面，是我就是被安排在这个位置，所以我会有今天这些行为。And here you see exactly what uh, some art does, like this Gunus that I showed in the first picture. It is literally questioning the social order. 那所以就是有一些艺术作品就是这样子产生。那包括我们在第一章这个投影片上面看到的那个行动艺术家，他所做的事情就是我们开始去质疑整个社会的规律以及整个社会的规则。So, as、so、well, I also give this distinction. For example, qualification is very much typical for modern art, talking about quality,、okay? uh, talking about、uh, this is qualified、uh, art, this is part of the art history, etc. Well, subjectification is literally breaking open this kind of hierarchies, questioning these hierarchies again. 那所以我就这个，我们下面可以看到很多细项，那就包括我们资格化这边有提到，就是现代艺术。那现代艺术，我们就是常常的在评论，然后在讨论说这个作品的品质以及它的呃高低的不同。那可是主观化呢，我们就是我们的主体化就是想要打破这整个。呃，所谓的这些这些规则以及这些这个所谓的资格。So in the subjectification process, you you try to break open again the social order or criticize the social order in which you are living. That's why I show you also、uh, this picture of Vio、uh, uh, Voina. I have to say it's a Russian、uh, artist activist collective, which. Uh, uh, Make this beautiful graffiti on a bridge, which goes like that, and it's in front of the KGB,、uh, the old KGB、uh, building in、uh, Moscow,、uh, which is a statement, of course, to、uh, the KGB itself. But what I want to say is, it's, it's breaking in. That's for me very important. Is art which breaks in、uh, social order, so it does not commence in a closed system, which is the art system, like modern art, in which also artists try to. Do something provocative, new, etc. But only in the closed art system. Here they break out of this art system and go into society to break into society. 那所以我们就可以知道说，这个主体化我们是在想要去打破以及想要去批评整个社会的规则。那我们包括我为什么在后面放了这张图？这个呃，我念。Yeah, that's the name of Voy Voyna. Okay, Voyna. This, this, this artist, he was in the Russian government behind, and he made this painting. He wanted to criticize the society and to express his opinion. Basically, at the same time, they were not only trying to challenge the society's rules, but they also crossed the social boundary. They also crossed the artistic boundary. 啊，就是想要做出更前卫，然后不要再是封闭的艺术，所以他你们可以看到说，就是它是融合了艺术以及社会的呃实景。So I next step I try to、uh, analyze this more analytically,、uh, how art can relate to、uh, society and to,、uh, to politics. 那所以接下来我会用更分析的方式来跟大家讨论说，究竟就是我们的艺术跟城市还有政治的关系。And、uh, for this, I uh, use uh, another theorician. It's called.、Uh, his name is Michel Sertou. Okay. 那我们这边提就是这个这个这个整个这个表是出自一个叫做 Michel Sertou 的的。So who is? Uh, a sociologist. Okay. 那一个一个社会学家。And he、uh, describes. 
uh, he, he analyzes the everyday in uh, the everyday life in cities. 然后他去分析就是我们的城市的日常生活。By making two oppositions. 然后就是用个两极化的方式去进行分析。He says when you look at cities, uh, you can see strategical uh, behavior. 那所以他就说我们，当我们在就是研究城市的时候，我们可以看到有这种非常规划性的的行为。so and for him, strategical behavior means, for example, urban planning, uh, the politics of a city, so long-term planning, urban planners who organize the city, uh, also define uh, uh, places, say, this place is, for example, for the market, this place is for uh, traffic, uh, this is for this kind of building, so strategies on the long run, uh, defining places. 那所谓的策划性的行为就是包括这个都市计划、都市规划，然后我们会去有一个长期的规划，说每某一个每一个区域是有什么样的功能存在，包括可能这个区域是将来会是市场，那个这个区域主要是呃以交通为主，所以就是
，呃，这都都是所谓的这个都市设计里面已经规划好的，所以艺术家就是在这些地方进行工作。那就如同我刚刚在第二张投影片里面有提到的，就是像刚刚那时候的呃法国的设计，那也一样，我们可以看到它就是将每一个部分都已经规划区分好。So for me, it's important that artists has uh, uh, artists can do their art in the city, but only uh, in those places. It means, or literally, in those buildings like uh, museums, etc., or uh, places which are made for public national statues. That's so. 很重要的就是大家要注意到，就是艺术家的确可以在城市里面创作，可是他们创作的地点是已经被规划好的特定的地方。那包括我们刚刚讲的，可能是博物馆或者是美术馆，那或者是说某个地方需要有雕像，那艺术家才能来这边创作。And in the end of the 1950s, there comes a response uh, to this.、Uh, artists try to break open、uh, the city, and that's why I call it. Uh, the situationist city related to the Paris situationists who started to uh, uh, in the uh, in the end of the 50s and the beginning of the 60s um, doing uh, actions in the street, uh, for example, running naked through the streets, doing happenings in the street. They try to break open this kind of uh, fixed, rigid, organized city. 那所以，在这个一九五零末期到一九六六年初期开始，艺术家想要打破新局，那就是我们称为这种情境主义的城市。那就是为了呼应当时在这个巴黎的时候的这个情境主义的出现，那我们开始有了这种行动的艺术。那包括就是可能是呃裸体在街上跑啊这样子的行为，然后想要打破整个城市里面的僵局。So the new tactics,、uh, but in a city which is still Uh, uh, very rigid, has fixed places, and they try to break it open. For example, the situation is with,、uh, I think, the first posters hanging around、um, everywhere in the city, but also the first primal uh, graffitis uh, in cities, etc. So、uh, again, they use tactics to break it open. That's 这就是艺术家他开始有了自己的做法。那然而，我们的地点还是在城市之内，所以还是非常固定的一个地点。所以，呃，就是这可以看到他是在这个位置，那就是在呃有不自己的做法，但是固定的地点。那他开始我们有不同的这种呃，可能海报会张贴在各个区域，然后有各个区也都会有呃不一样的涂鸦，那他们就不再受到规划或者是控制。Uh, and、uh, as well documented、uh, historically, the Situationists were,、uh, in fact, the、uh, origin or the base for the student movements in the 60s. At、uh, 68, May 68 in uh, uh, Paris, where、uh, there were a lot of uh, ri uh, riots, uh, riots uh, done by students who fought for more freedom, for more democracy of universities, for example,、uh, more dem democratic institutions like museums. Uh, and so on. That's so. 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 那所以他们想要做的事情就是让整个城市变得更加动态。那我会说就是更有流动性。And、uh, it was in an interview what I once did with, with、uh, an architect, Ram Kolas, who mentioned here、uh, a little bit cynically said, "In fact, the situation is the one." And that's exactly what we see in、uh, in the 90s. That、uh, the people who were the students who were in the 60s、uh, on the streets in the riots, they become the new governments of cities in the 80s and in the 90s.、Uh, they become also the CEOs of real estate,、uh, of big companies, and in fact, they make literally the city liquid. 
。那所以到了这个一九九零年的时候，那我那时我我我曾经跟一个建筑师那谈论过这件事情，那就是在一九九零年的时候，当初在抗议一九六零年在抗议的那些学生，那他们后来就变成了。可能到了政府里面去工作，或者是变成了大公司的的执行长，或者是在这个房地产业工作，那他们开始主掌了权力，然后也同样的，他们改变了整个城市，让整个城市更有流动性。So, I mean, this is the, the creative city、uh, based as we know it, and what, what、uh, exactly starts? I think the whole idea of the creative city starts already in in、uh, um, or the origin lays in 1971. When、uh, and this is a technical financial thing, when the Bretton Woods system uh, is um, uh, collapses, so the United States at a certain moment says the Bretton Woods system、uh, we don't、uh, subscribe it anymore. What is the Bretton Woods system? I try to explain two words.、Uh, Bretton Woods system means literally that money is connected to gold. That means until 1971. Uh, uh, that there was,、uh, and it is still there. It's Alcatraz, it's a jail in a, 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 an old jail in the United States, where every country has his kilos of gold. And when you、um, have inflation of your money or、um, deflation, it means that some gold. From your country goes to another cell of another country. It was literally related to gold. It has a, it has a material currency. That's the Bretton Woods system. 好，那整个这个创意城市的的缘起是大概从一九七一年开始。那一九七一年为什么会跟这个时代是有关系？那主要是跟当时的经济情况有关。那因为在每一个这个货币在每个城市可能当时不稳定的情况，那就会有通膨的情形出现。那所以呢，大家开始希望可以把货币换成黄金来进行交流。那所以就是呃，因为因为黄金在每一个城市之间的话，可能都是有一样的价值，可是相对来说货币是不一样。然后又遇到通膨的话，可能就会呃有贬值的情形出现。所以大家就会呃开始一直把货币换成黄金。When this、uh, system stops. And I don't. This is an economical thing. I don't want to go in detail to that.、Uh, but when the system stops, it means literally、uh, money becomes liquid. That means that money flows over the world very, very easily, especially later on with digitalization, etc. But what is it? It is not anymore bound to a nation state. And what happens then? It concentrates. Very strong in typical cities like London, for example, this city in London.、Uh, so it concentrates in cities. This is very important. 那所以这个这是一个非常经济的经济性的问题。那所以就是当时我们的呃，因为没减少了货币，然后使用黄金，那开始这个我们的钱可以在全世界流通，而不是只限定于每一个国家之内。那可是呢，同时的这些黄金可以流通之后，那它就全部都集中到大城市，像是伦敦这样的大城市之中。And what happens then afterwards? It concentrates on in in,、uh, in specific cities.、Uh, what happens then afterwards? People follow the money. So they also you have huge immigration flows, which starts from the 70s on, especially in European cities, where also people they want to、uh, make money, etc. So they follow the money and they concentrate also. So you get huge immigration flows starting from the 70s also. 那所以就在这个一九七零年代开始，因为金钱的集中，那同样的人们想要赚钱，所以尤其是以欧洲城市为主，那人们开始有了大。这个大批的移民的出现，因为没大家都想要赚钱，所以大家都移入大城市之中。And that's what I mean that cities become liquid.、Eh? They, they, every five years you have other people living in the cities, but also, and this is very important, the destination of buildings changes every five years because of speculation. Some owners change of buildings. They are not anymore, for example, state-owned buildings for 100 years,、uh, but every five years. They change of owner, etc. So this makes makes the city literally movable. 
那所以就这样子的情形，让整个城市变得更加有流动性。那所谓的流动性，就是说，呃，现在开始每五年的时间，可能就是住在城区、住在城市里面的人开始不断的改变，就是有新的移民出现的时候，就有不同的一群人注入这个城市之中。那也同样的，每一个这个建筑物开始有了不同的目的、不同的功能存在，因为这个可能每一栋建筑物。后来有新的人住进去以后，就开始有新的功能或者新的目的。那所以整个城市变得好像是呃流动的城市。So and also when you look at the the, the monumental city uh, uh, back to that, it means it was very much related to factories. Factories are stable. They are there. It's material. Our buildings. It is defined for hundred years that they make in the factory that thing. And this is the huge shift. Uh, in, in the 80s and the 90s, 1990s, uh, 1980s, 1990s, that uh, you, uh, become in the post-industrial age, so factories collapse or they are, as you probably very well know, are moved to places like this from Europe. And uh, wh uh, what they do in Europe is they try then at that moment concentrate the money in those cities, and they, do, they try to attract this money in the cities, and they do this by developing creative districts in those old factories. So they try to bind uh, uh, money to the city, attract money to the city, by developing um, new businesses, which are creative businesses. 那所以我们可以再看回刚刚所谓的这个纪念性的城市。那纪念性的城市就是，呃，相对来说就是可以，我们可以拿来做这个工厂的对比。那所以工厂可能伫立在那边一百年，那这是一个有形的建筑物，然后持续的去进行生产。那所以我们可以看到，到了创意的城市的时候，就表示说，在这个一八一九八零年到一九九零年之间，我们这个。产生产生了一个巨大的转变，那当时就已经进到了这个后工业时代，那所以欧洲的城市他们开始集中这个集中金钱，那同样的他们也不断的在吸引金钱，那要怎么样去吸引？就是他们把这些旧有的工厂，那规划成这个这个创意的区域，然后呢开开发出就是开创出新的产业，然后来吸引更多的人以及钱进到城市之中。And this is, an, uh, for Europe at least, this is an official policy which starts in the 90s. And uh, I always take the, the symbolic moment when this starts is when uh, Tony Blair, he was at that moment Prime Minister of, of um, uh, Great Britain, UK, he embraces for the cameras Bono of U2, of, of the pop band U2. At that moment, you have kind of symbolic moment in which he officializes and they officialize also this kind of creative industry policy. 那所以当时呢，在这个一九九零年的时候，他们就这个英国的首相就的确提出了相对的这种创意区域的政策，那就是相当的是具有这个象征性，代表这个新的时代的开始。So again, it's very important for economical reasons. They try to buy creatives. They every city wants to have its fashion district, its theatre district, its Museum, the Bilbao's. Uh, think about that. And the Guggenheim Museum, etc. is big uh, institutions to symbolize the creativity uh, of the city. And so it is. It is a really a strategy. That's why I call it also strategy to bind uh, uh, money in cities. 那所以这个这个当时他们就开始希望说可以呃买到这些创意。那所以他们就开始。可能建很多的博物馆啊，然后很多的这个艺术机构，然后希望说，呃，这种大型的博物馆或者艺术机构可以象征是这个创意，那象征是这层这个城市是有创意，然后借此这是一个策略，让他们可以吸引到更多的钱跟人。And this is、uh, what is interesting also is that the mayors of the cities in the in the 1990s, most of them who who embrace this kind of creative city idea. Are all left-wing socialist mayors? 那所以在这个一九九零年，当时的这些呃大城市的市长，他们几乎都是的这个欧欧洲的大城市市长，他们几乎都是呃左派的的社会学家。And then the 2000s starts, and what we see is that those mayors are、um, not elected anymore, and we get new mayors which come in. 
most of them of very conservative, nationalistic, and neoliberal political parties. 那到了两千年之后，我们过去的那些这个左派的社会学家，他们就都没有选上。那后来新选上的都是属于保守主义、国家主义的新自由主义的这些呃政党人选。London, Berlin, uh, in the European cities are typical where, where you see the shift. Now we can see the major cities, such as London, Berlin, and these cities, we can see a shift in the direction. And what is interesting is that those conservative governments, those new conservative governments, still embrace the creative city because of economical reasons, but they also say we need more cameras in the street, we need more police in the street, so at the same time, and this is very interesting, they combine this creative city idea with more uh, repression. 那当时的这些保守的政府，他们还是呃非常接受当时的这个创意的这些思维。那主要是为了经济的考量。那但是他们希望说城市之中有更多的呃监视器或者是警察来介入。那所以就希望，所以就我们就产生了这样子压抑型的创意城市。So also, for example, zero, zero tolerance for drugs, for uh, alcohol uh, use, etc. 那所以就是也是严禁包括毒品啊，或者是酒精这样子的这些呃可能会产生问题的东西。But what for me is important again is uh, those creative districts are planned. They have a fixed place again, a strategy. Yeah? That's the creative district. There can artists do what they want, but not another place. It's only there. Yeah? It's only most of the time. It's made liquid. It's for five years, for example. Empty buildings. Artists can come in. They can uh, 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 play a role in the gentrification process. But then they are kicked out again because the price is rise, etc. So it's liquid. But it is a strategy. It is a strategy followed. 那所以就是当时的就是一样，还是有策划说这些这个创意区，那他们还是在固定的地方。那可是每五年可能就是会有一群新的艺术家这个进驻，那可能包括就是可能当地的租金上涨或什么之类的。那所以整个城市还是相当的具有流动性。And I think nowadays this is the situation in,、uh, in which most of the cities、uh, are functioning nowadays. When I look, we do research in different cities in Europe, but also, for example, when you look at Moscow, there's its creative districts, but it's a very, at the same time, they have a very repressive uh, uh, policy. The city of Antwerp, where I live, just the same. London, you see it, you see those kind of uh, privatized uh, security systems, even, which, which uh, defend those kind of creative districts, which have become very fixed again. So you see this kind of very double thing, this kind of stimulating creativity, autonomy, yeah? take your freedom, but at the same time you see、uh, enormous control apparatus、uh, which comes in. Again, cameras in the street, more police in the street, and several governments. 那所以这个我可以说，现在的就是主要大城市都是以这样子的方式在运行。那包括呃莫斯科啊，或者是我住的安安特卫普，或者是伦敦，那都一样的是，我们让这些呃艺术机构或这些艺术家拥有高度的自治。那同时的是，我们在这个这周边那设计了更多的监视器，然后也同样的会有这个私人的驻警，然后来似乎是在保护这些。这个艺术家，但是同时是增强了这整个呃对于这个艺术区域的控制，那所以我们会称之为是这个压抑的艺术城、创意城市。So this is the condition of most of the cities I know nowadays,、uh, today.、Uh, but what we also see is that a lot of artists,、uh, especially artists, but also activists, etc., try to escape and they 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 search for alternatives, and that's what I call the common city. Which I will try to explain later on, but that's at least at this moment I call it the utopia where people want to live for. 那我我们现在大部分的城市都是处于这个创意压抑性城市这样子的状况。那但是我们也可以看到说，有越来越多的这个行动主义的分子或者是艺术家想要逃脱现在的这种这个情形，所以他们开始呃。的采取一些行动，那所以会成为呃我们接下来要讨论这个共同城市，那这个也是可能是大家一直都在向往的一个地方。I know I、uh, make a step further. I try to analyze how artists 
try to build up this common city and how they do it, which strategies, which tactics they also follow to uh, develop alternative ways of, of making art and intervening in the city. 那所以，我刚刚这边就已经先讲说，我为什么我们这些艺术家会想要来创造这个呃共同城市的这样子的理念。那就先跟大家谈了一谈这样子。And for this, I, I use this example of this is a sculpture of、uh, his sculpture vase, and I go in depth to this in a, in a second. What is exactly this is about?、Uh, but I call this kind of new way of working. Art constitutions, like the Constitution,、uh, literally,、uh, they try to develop、uh, new new spaces、uh, in cities, and they always start from what I call civil space. Ah, so this 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 side, you can see the image is a sculpture, sculpture. That sculpture is basically to explain what the sculpture is going to be like. How do they start it? How do they start it? How do they start it? 而不一样的艺术是从这个所谓的公民的的领域开始。And I、uh, I try to、uh, explain or define、uh, very clear what civil is. Civil means not civic. Civil means where people do something、uh, without that they know if the government allows it or not.、Uh, so it means, for example, people say in our community or Our village. We need a school, so we build a school、uh, because we need it. Civic means when the government says, "Oh, interesting, and I think it's a good thing that you build a school." So we regulate, and、uh, we、uh, we even subsidize maybe or we support you.、Uh, that's civic. So civic means when the government is involved.、Uh, civil means where people just do something because they think it's necessary or needed. 那首先，我想要跟大家来定义一下所谓的 civil 跟 civic。那 civil 是呃，如果翻译中文的话，我们会说是公民。那 civic 我们在这边翻译成市民。那所谓的 civil 公民的意思就是说，呃，这有一群人，他们可能不知道做的事情是不是会受到政府所接受，但他们仍来做了。包括说，像是我们看到一个村庄里面可能需要学校，所以我们就决定要去盖学校，但是并没有经过这个这个政府或者是当地同志的同意。那相对来说 ，civic 如果是以市民的角度来看的话，那我们就是可能会从这个政府的角度出发。政府认为说我们有需要，呃，学校或者是有人提出来，政府认为很有趣，那我们可能有需要学校的时候，那政府就立出了政策或者是呃补助，然后来协助大家来盖学校。Where you can say what you want. It's a place of argument. It's the media, for example, but it's also the the place of、uh, Facebook, where you say like, dislike. That's also public space. But it's also the place where you can have brilliant ideas and argue brilliant ideas. For example, democratization of education. That is a is a a beautiful public idea. But for me, public space is especially words, discourse,、uh, argument. While civil space is rolling up your sleeves and doing things, that's the difference. So, democratization of education, public, fantastic idea. Civil space is we build a school. That's the difference. 那我同样的也是，就是比较这个 civil 跟 public 这两个字的不同。那 civil 我们刚刚讲到的是公民，那 public 是公众。那在公众的情况，公众的领域之中的话，是大家想要什么，我们去表达自己的渴望是什么。那包括像是在呃大众媒体上面，或者在 Facebook 上面，大家可能可以去表达自己喜对于事情的喜好，喜欢或者是不喜欢。那一样可以去吵架或去讨论说，呃，对于某个议题的看法。那包括说是像是可能是这个教育自主啊这样子的议题，都可以拿出来讨论。那对我而言，公众的领域所做的事情都只是讨论。那公民的领域，我们是实际上去进行，那也就是。我们卷卷起袖子，真的去做。那包括刚刚这个这个，可能是学校的民主化，那或者是民主的这个教育，这些这样子的讨论，我们会在公众的这个空间进行。那在公民的空间里面，我们会持续去盖学校，然后持续去进行操作。So, but you of course need both to develop a practice. I mean, you need good ideas again, democratization of education, and then building a school. Uh, to develop、uh, a practice, but my point is, when you do this, and then, then 
I try to explain where Commons stands for. When you do this, just take the example again from a school. You build a school. Yeah? You have a fantastic ID, public space, democratization of education. You build your school, and then you have your school, but then comes always the moment that you see, oh, but we have only 25 seats in our school. So who can use the civil service we developed? Yeah? So then the discussion comes, who can have access to the school? Which children can come to the school and which are excluded? And that's where the discussion of common starts. It's, it's really, literally, we have built a public service, a civil service, and but the places or the resources are limited. And who can use them? Then the discussion of common starts. No. 基本上我们需要同时需要有公众的空间因为我们可以在公众的空间讨论出一些想法与点子那同样我们需要有公民的空间那毕竟是实行那就会促成有点子跟实行的时候我们就促成实践那同样的我们要用实践来讨论我们
So that's also why I call uh, this, this kind of common in practices or common in art practices uh, a constitutional practices. Because they literally do the same as the constitutionalists did. That means, uh, and, and this is ha Hannah Arendt uh, talking about on revolution, about what uh, constitutionalists did. So I mean constitutionalists, people who made the constitution, uh, the constitution of the United States, for example. She says this about the, them. She, she says those constitutionalists, those who get together to constitute a new government, are themselves unconstitutional. That is, they have no authority to do what they have set out to achieve. So indeed, you cannot make a constitution while you are already in the constitution. Uh, and that's typical, that's a typical illegal practice. And so you make new regulations in fact, but of course what you are doing is illegal because you cannot be in the law which you make yourself. 那我们会将这样子的行为是形容成这种共同的陈述so, and, and this is for me very important. I think when you look at commoning art, what they try to do is not only anymore to make uh, something new in the art world, what they literally try to do is give back uh, a constitution, a regulation for what they do in society. And so they literally try to change laws and regulations. Reset as Urbanus, for example, this is an example uh, with it. They work also with lawyers, uh, they are very well informed, and uh, for their actions, often they, um, when, for example, the police comes, when they build the construction and say you cannot build it, uh, on this, they use lawyers and they point often or they argue with the Constitution. Because a lot of things, for example, when they build a school where it's illegal or illegal, uh, built, they say, yes, but we have in our constitution freedom of education, democratization of education. Uh, so they, f they use this kind of regulations, constitutional regulations, to constitute this kind of new common practice. 那所以这样子的艺术行为其实是并不是真的要创造出什么新的东西这个可能宪法或者是法律保护他们在这边行使他们的权利 so, and uh, again, metaphorically, but I mean it also almost literally, is, is what they do in this constitutional praxis is reground uh, and uh, um, uh, regrounding things. And what I mean by this is, uh, first of all, in Dutch, the, the, the uh, word constitution is translated in Dutch as uh, Grondwet. And Grondwet means, I translate it now in English, but in English is never used like that, ground law. So the constitution is a ground law. So it means literally a ground to stand on. Okay? And that's what the constitution is, that are general laws on which you can stand on. And say, having said this, this is literally what those commoning artists are doing. They are in this liquid city, which everything is movable. They try to reground again things by making protocols, regulations, and even pushing in laws again in the city, which gives people a ground to stand on. For example, the regulation that the building stays for 100 years 
the order of, of, of uh, one group to say something. It's a regulation. So it's really trying to make places fixed again, stable to stand on. 那所以基本上这个我们可以说这群这个共同艺术家他们在做的事情就是在重新制定一个新的基础那什么是制定一个新的基础那就是我们从荷兰荷兰文的的宪法这个字如果翻成英文的话可以翻成就是ground就是基础
的讨论，或者是任何这个政治人物提出的论点，或者是理性的研究，而是出自于情绪。那可能举一个例子来说，就是当有人呃，当我们感到很害怕的时候，比如说我们要上街抗议，但是因为这个可能会怕会犯罪，所以我们就不敢上街。那我们要怎么样去呃？一样采取行动，那可能这时候就会出现所谓的公民行动。Well, it's typical for a motion, and this is very important. I think that the motion can、uh, accumulate, can can grow. Right? You feel angry and you rah, get it out. But also, what we all know, at a certain moment, it decreases again. It, 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 it goes down again. That's why I use this ugly design, this laying egg. It starts somewhere, it grows, and then it shrinks again. <laughs> 那这个我们会谈谈论说，这个情绪的这个常态，它是呃情绪是会持续的增这个累积，然后增长。那但是到了一定的阶段以后，也是会这个在在缩缩小或者减少。所以我用了这个很丑的设计，那给大家看说，就是待会会整个情绪会怎么样的变化。But as we all know, of course, emotion is not enough to talk about civil action. For civil action, you need also a second phase, and that means that you Reflect about the emotion. You try to、uh, bring on the words. Try to analyze where this emotion comes from. For example, think about all those freelancers who get stressed and they cannot sleep anymore.、Uh, they have, at certain moments,、uh, have at least to go to an action. They have to. Think about themselves. Oh, what is happening with me? Why am I so emotional? Why can I not sleep anymore at night? Well, because maybe I have stress. This is not giving the, the word is a kind of self-reflection. This is very important. This is very important second step to go to civil action. 那当然，我们要进进行这个公民行动，其实只有情绪是不够的。那第二步，我们就是要去进行反思。那反思就是我们要去思考，并且去分析我们的情绪。那举例来说，可能呃有今天有一个自由工作者，那他感觉到呃就是生活很有压力，然后他都没有办法睡着觉，那所以他就会开始去思考说，哎，我现在究竟发。发生了什么事情？为什么会有现在这些状况？那那他最后会得出结论说，呃，或许我现在是倍感压力。那为什么会造成这样的情形？他会不断的去呃思考跟分析，然后才能才会再进行进一步的行动。But even then, you don't have civil action. For civil action, you need also communication. You need to talk with others about your stress.、Uh, and of course, this communication with others also. Uh, improves the reflection about it uh, when you talk about uh, your stress with, for example,、uh, colleagues or a therapist, etc. You try to refine and define better what is happening there. 那当然，如果这情绪跟反思其实还是不够，那第三步我们要做的就是要进行沟通。那你要把你的问题与其他人说，然后。在这做的过程中，我们也可以同时的去呃证实自己反思的内容是不是对的。那也是我们有时候会与同事啊，或者是与心理师去进行讨论。那我们就可以去重新定义自己反思的事情，那以及我们的情绪。But then again, talking is not enough. At the end, you need to organize yourself or organize a civil action、uh, to really get a civil action.、Uh, and uh, so, organization is important. Why I show this is that's for me a civil sequence. That means literally it starts always with emotion, and finally you end up with an organization. It can be, for example, an NGO,、uh, which deals with civil uh, actions, uh, civil society, etc. But why I show it like this is also that at what often hap happens with civil action is that at the end you have an organization, but the The emotion faded out, so the organization loses its drive. It loses. It also use, it loses its, its reason of existence. That often happens with civil organizations at the end. So you get a kind of institution which don't doesn't know any more the reason for its existence, or at least it has not any more the drive because the emotion faded out. And this is a typical pattern. That's why I call it also civil sequence of civil action in general. 那
。当然，只有上述的三点其实还是不太足够。我们最后需要的是组织，我们需要去组织自己以及组织去呃某一种机构或者是活动，那来进行，那来进行操作。那包括像是这种非政府组织就是一种。那我们提出了非政府，建立了非政府组织，然后来建。来解决我们想要处理的问题，那可能就是来发起公民行动。那，但是我们也可以从这个图之中看到，就是从最初的情绪到最后的组织，我们可以看到我们的情绪是越来越缩小的。那，呃，可能在这个过程中就会慢慢的失去一开始进行这去发起行动的动力，或者是甚至是这个组织存在的意义都会因为情绪的消弭而渐渐的消失。那所以这就是一个典型的我们的呃。这个公民行动的，这个公民行为的这种呃，整个活动的时程可能会是像是这个样子。But again, when you、uh, follow the sequence, you cannot speak、uh, yet about civilization. For example, emotion, you feel exhausted, you cannot sleep anymore. Self-reflection, I have stress. Uh, uh, it could be self-reflection. You talk with your therapist, for example, about this. Um, and you try to analyze where the stress、uh, comes from, and your therapist can say maybe ah you are a, stre a stress sensitive person. You have to work on this and this and this. So you have to organize yourself and do, for example, some yoga, etc. Yoga is not civil action. <laughs> so it's, it's a self therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so what is important here? This is a kind of pattern a lot of people uh, and uh, but also organizations. Follow, but to have civil action, you need something more. To have civil action, you need what I call three transitions in this process, and I want to focus now on those three transitions. And I do this exactly to show you where art comes in in the in the last phase, and that's also the last slide. I don't worry, then I'm finished. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> so. 但是我们只如果说看到刚刚那个图的话，其实并不足以说明这四个阶段是否就是可以促成我们的公民行动。那因为可能一开始举一个例子，一开始你感觉到呃整个人好像被掏空了，然后接下来你会进进行这个自我反思，你会觉得呃可能是倍感压力，然后你就会进行沟通，想要跟心理师讨论，然后进行分析。那可能心理师就会说你是一个对于呃压力特别敏感的人，那你需要想到一些方法来舒舒压，那你可能就会进行。呃，瑜伽，那所以最后去组织自我的过程是进行瑜伽，那这就不会，这就不是一个公民行动，不是一个公民行为，不是你真的促成了什么样的行动。所以我们会说，我们的公民行动是要这个遵循的，可能是这样子的过程，但是大部分的人都是遵循这样子的过程去发起公民行动。但是其中我们还要讨论到的是三个重要的转变，那所以待会我会给大家看到，就是这样转变的图，三个重要的转变的图，那也会告诉大家说，艺术家就是在哪一个。So you need three transitions、uh, to make a civil action, or to make for my action a civil action,、uh, and those three transitions take place on on two phases: one on the level of emotion, and two on the level of of, of communication. 那所以我们需要三个转变，那有其中一个转变是在于情绪的阶段，那有另外一个转变是在沟通的阶段发生。And first, on the level of emotion, you need to go from、uh, what Manuel Castells again says, from a negative to a positive emotion. And he literally says, as an example, you need to go, for example, from fear to anger. 那所以其中一个学者就有提说提出过，我们必须要将情绪从负面的情绪转变成正面的情绪。那比如说从呃恐惧转变成这个呃愤怒的情绪。So when you are angry, you have the energy to do something, even when something feels quite negative, but it gives you the drive to do something. 那所以当我们愤怒的时候，我们开始有动力去做事情。那即便这个这个愤怒是呃某种程度上是这个定义上面是负面的，但是它是给我们动力的来源。And again, I say this because art plays a very important role in this transition. But that's for the next slide. But that's why I point to this. 那我会说，这个艺术家在艺艺术家在这个三个转变过程中都占有相当重要的的一个角色。那可能待会下一张的投影片里面，我们才会再让大家看到。Second transition which is necessary is you go and、uh, need to go from the individual level, your individual problem. I have stress because I'm stress sensitive. 
to a collective problem. A lot of people have stress. How does it come? 那所以第二个转变就是发生在说，我们要让一个从这个是属于单一个人的问题的时候，让它变成是呃是原来大家都有这个问题。比如说，当我今天感觉到这个很很有压力的时候，那是不是今天其实大家都是很有压力的？ So again, this is very important. The the, the de-individualization of a problem it means literally that you see that you are not the only one, or it's also not it has not only a psychological individual reason because you have stress. Stay with this example, but you see it everywhere. A lot of people have stress now, so you collectivize the problem. 那所以我们就要去看到说，今天我们所遇到的问题不是个人心理上面的问题，而是我们这些问题是随处可见，每一个人都有。那所以这就变成一个集体的问题。And the last uh, transition is that you make of a private problem, as we have all stress and we go in therapy, then you say it's a private problem. Or for example, also when you you stick in a private problem, you say I have problems with my boss, so I go to a lawyer to find my boss. Can you make an individual? Private problem uh, of it, you need to make of it a public problem. Public problem means, for example, all what we see nowadays that is how our labor is organized, how the system is function, does uh, make that stress increases. So that you see it also as a structural analysis and learn it as a kind of public uh, uh, issue. That's. 第三个转变就是我们要让事情从私人的事情变成一个公众的问题。那比如说，当我们今天呃只是感觉到压力，然后我们去找心理师咨商，那这就是一个私人的事情。或者是说，你认为你跟你的老板有什么过节，那你可能去找老板的律师谈，然后去想要想要商讨出一个解决的办法。那这都是私人的层面。那如果当今天是一个公开公众的层面的时候，我们就会将它这整个层面整个呃等级提升，就是说呃是不是今天我们整个社会有这个劳工结构上面的问题，或者是说呃每一个。其实这样子的劳工结构促成了让我们的的员工或者是劳工都有这些呃压力敏感性的问题，那就是我们想要去改变整个结构，那所以这就这个问题就从私人变成公众化。But this last transition is also very important to make of a private problem a political problem. Eh? This is to make it a public issue of it,、uh, etc. To discuss it in public. 那所以这些问题，除了除了把问题升华变成从私人变成公众以外，那我们也一样需要纳入更多的人，就是从一开始是自己单独在处理，那我们也需要更多的人一起来讨论这些问题。So one but last slide then. Now the question is, how does art and artists intervene in this、uh, in this system? What's the role and where do they function? 好，那这接下来就是我的最后一张投影片。那我们就是要来讨论说，究竟艺术以及艺术家是怎么样参与在这整个公民行动的过程之中。One is very important, and but also I think very well known is what artists do is giving a picture of the future. So they make you act. They show you a better world, a utopia, or maybe a dystopia. For example.、Uh, um, 1984 of、uh, the book of、uh, George Orwell is a dystopia, which makes you act.、Right? Uh, so this is very important. So building up a kind of imagination of a of a possible future, which can be a utopia or a dystopia,、uh, which makes you act. That's why we. 在艺术家在这个过程中扮演非常重要的角色，也就是他要给予人们一个对于未来的想象。那不论这个未来的想象是想象出一个乌托邦，或者是想象出一个乌托邦的画面都可以。那比如说乌托邦画面，我们举例子就是这个我们的乔治·欧威尔所写的《一九八四》这一本书里面就有提到说，就是整个这个社会受到控制。那像这样子乌托邦画面，那就是我们提出了一个可能的未来的想象，然后让人们想要去采取行动，不论是去追求这个乌托邦，或者是去。So, for example, to go back to the action of Reseta、uh, Zurbanas, the utopia was there that everybody can have a home. That's that's the utopia. 那所以在这个的社会学家他们提到的这个乌托邦里面，就是每一个人都可以有一个家。And then the second thing, what what artists、uh, are very good in is changing emotions. Transforming emotions, 
and this is literally what they do. But it's it's uh, changing, for example, a negative emo emotion in a positive emotion, and that's what they do because they can play with all the senses. So aesthetics as aesthesis. That means they can touch you uh, by showing you things, letting experience you things, etc. So it's not convincing in a rational matter like studies, researches, etc. It is really uh, really making you feel things. For example, uh, um, yeah, we, we studied this a theater group who uh, makes with uh, inhabitants of a, a poor neighborhood um, a theater play and they play that as if they would already live in a better neighborhood. So they do this play, a play role, etc. just to feel, to have this experience. And that's is, is really a typical thing which our artists very much schooled in and, and talented in is to, to, to speak to all the senses, to touch it.透过感官以及美学然后来影响人的情绪这个社区里面的人都他们都住到一个更好的社区更富有的社区的时候literally means that you learn as and you learn even at school i think but uh, uh, a lot of artists are also just talented this is to make from an individual problem or of an individual feeling a collective form and it is really by expression that you can express your feelings and you can collectivize them uh, with others 那第二点的话是表达的部分，那表达部分可能其实已经是非常陈腔滥调。那我们一直以来就是在学习要怎么样的表达自己，那可是透过表达的这样子的能力，我们可以让个人单一的问题，然后传达给其他人，然后变成一
who uh, works with them to make the construction. So literally, they, they, uh, they are labor force in it. Uh, but uh, they also uh, use at the same time uh, the building. 那所以这个同样的有这些在这边当地这边的人的参与 so to, to resume, in, in a way, they start from civil space. Right? They start from doing things because people wanted their this school. Right? That's, that's the starting point. And they just start building. But then they look at regulation and how they see how can we construct it that it stays there, that the police cannot come and say you have to uh, demolish the, uh, the building uh, again. And next step, it goes to the commons. They built a, a construction, a school, which can be shared with the community. So this is common ground what they made there, literally. 那所以就是一样是从我们所谓的公民的空间出发就是当地有这样子类型的学校的需求的时候他们就开始建立这样的学校那建立完成以后然后就去重新的再重回法律的基础那我们去看有什么样的法律可以支持这件事情的成真然后
we count thousands of this kind of initiatives everywhere. And I think the whole thing, what we also try to do with the research now, is to, uh, to network at least th those experiences. And for example, also Reset as Urbana, sorry, I'm saying a lot, but <laughs> Reset as Urbana has built also a network for exchange of regulations, of law. So which is very important in the construction uh, of this kind of common ground uh, everywhere. Yeah, maybe that's enough for today. 那剛剛講說要談兩件事第二件事情就是我明年還會再針對這些可能這些活動的功能啊以及它的細節然後再進行多談那我想說的就是其實像這樣子的活動這樣子的機構在特別是在歐洲或者是美國其實已經是這個越
Yeah, it is always the question. Uh, yeah, because it's very interesting. I saw what they do. Uh, you can imagine, indeed, that uh, uh, no government is willing to subsidize this uh, because it's illegal. Uh, but also, private companies most of the time are not interested uh, in this. Uh, it's like uh, uh, I would say, like. Uh, Ai Weiwei didn't get sponsored by legal because he's a political artist. That especially com uh, companies, are, private companies, are very afraid of when you start to become in this kind of very strange zones which become political uh, in a sense. They support community art with lots uh, when you are on social level, but when you start on political level. So, how to finance <laughs> is the question. Um, Exactly what Reset of Urbanus does is, first of all, uh, it's not about finance, but uh, yeah, uh, who finances is the community who sits there around. Okay. So the depart are the people who they want a school and they fight for a school, so they are the first ones. So and they do a lot of things to collect money. Yeah, it can be. Uh, um, uh, crowdfunding, just to say one thing, but it also can say, okay, everyone lays uh, uh, yeah, in euros, 50 euros uh, uh, together. So that's one thing. But what you also see in those kind of projects is that, that uh, they can work very cheap and they can replace uh, financial or economical money by social capital. So they work a lot with people who come to work there as a volunteer, for example, but also Resetas Urbanas uh, has um, a network all over Europe and also Latin, uh, Latin America to recycle materials. So to uh, uh, ship materials very cheap from one place to another. Uh, so they have spotters everywhere in Europe to look at what is what is cheap material there? Can we use it and, and bring it back there? So, so they, they make a kind of social system um, which, which very much is focusing on um, uh, yeah, the classical Marxist term of use value. So uh, when you look at our economical system, when you build a building, it's very much build, uh, uh, related to exchange value. That means that uh, everybody who is in, uh, uh, involved wants to make profit of it. Uh, well, they uh, um, reframe this again to say, no, the basis is use value. Uh, a house needs uh, to live in, that's the first thing, it needs not to make profit. Uh, so you get completely other relationships based on that, which makes it cheaper. But still, they function with money, yeah? uh, 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 and they need money or they need alternative money coins, but they need money to exchange, etc. Uh, so, but first of all, reducing money as, as most as possible, that's one uh, uh, thing. And then how they uh, collect it is uh, um, uh, yeah, by the collective, the community who, who ask it. So they have no assignments of the government because they refuse. They have no assignments of, uh, of, of support or sponsoring of private companies. Uh, it all starts with those people. And those people go sometimes to governments and governments say at the end, well, yes, maybe, or uh, private companies also. Uh, but also they ask something, com sometimes completely different things, which companies, uh, for example, private companies then, uh, um, when, when they have it, can share. For I, I just have an idea. Uh, an example in my head of a small town in Belgium called Mechelen, uh, where an artist, um, yeah, I, I tell just the story, uh, how it figures, uh, do you have That's to translate it all? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay, it started with uh, an artist and, and a museum, and they started with the question, where does inequality comes from in Europe? Yeah, and, uh, they came out with, uh, yeah, with the conclusion the inequality does not come from a uh, difference in, in loan, so in fee you have uh, monthly. No, it comes from heritage. 
because there's a huge difference in what people, uh, the heritage of people from their parents, etc. This makes a huge difference in inequality. That's the main reason for inequality. So they had as a, as a kind of as a kind of symbolic gesture. They said, "Okay, what uh, what can we do to make this discussion about inequality uh, and to uh, come up to more equality? We want for every citizen of Mechelen, this town, one square meter for free. That was their idea. So we we redistribute the ground, literally. And immediately the mayor said, "Oh, wow, fantastic idea! I give you already twenty thousand square meters." for the citizens. And then companies also start, oh, what a fantastic idea. We have also stole uh, ground here, uh, which is not used, etc. Also 20,000. So you get a kind of, it's not about money. Uh, uh, it's all about this process of, of this ground. And then now they are busy with the whole discussion. Every citizen now, uh, there are 80,000 citizens only, small town, has a square meter. Now starts the discussion what to do with the square meter. So the citizens cannot go projects. You can say, I have a square meter, I have a square meter, make it, maybe we can make a cycling path when we have so much square meters of it. Or make a school or, or this kind. So it is all, I think in the whole project, there is one euro used. Uh, and, and all the things is, uh, um, also the administration of the city is now thinking completely different in, in doing projects, but also companies, they come with their uh, materials, what they already have uh, to um, help, etc. But having said this, money stays a problem uh, uh, in, in, the, in, this, uh, in this kind of situations. And I will elaborate this more uh, tomorrow because uh, money is also a problem because a lot of commerce organizations uh, are a little organized also because the only thing what we have, I think also here, is or you have public law or you have private law and there's nothing in between. Mm -hmm. And they are often, those organizations are often in between uh, uh, organizations. So it's also a matter of regulation uh, to, to, to have the possibility to make money of what you're doing. But one is cooperatives. Cooperatives function very much like this commons, but they function in the market system. But in a different way. Everybody in the cooperative is an owner of their own firm. That's already a huge difference. Uh, but anyway, it stays a problem. They are searching everywhere for money and alternatives. It stays We don't have to translate. Yeah, or. Ah, that question, the question is, 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 the 之中有很多政治上面的意涵，那所以这些私有企业其实是会害怕说会呃影响到他们在进行整个运作上面的问题。那所以那究竟这些的经费、这些财政问题要怎么样处理？那其实都是来自于我们可以看到底下的这些人，那就是这些社区的民众。那最先发起这些活动的就是想要。呃，建立这个学校的人，那想要呃有这种学习需求的人，那他们就会开始，那他们就是会开始呃收集像这样子的人，然后大家聚集起来，那可能是会进行这个群众募资，然后去找到呃去找到有相同理念的人，然后从他们身上呃获取经费。那另外一面来讲的话，也会尽量的想要降低呃其中所花费的经费，那就是想要让所有东西越便宜越好，那就是也是尽量的采用整个社会的。的资源，比如说就是可能会有很多都是呃志工来协助，然后里面的建建构的资源可能也都是呃呃资源回收来的的东西。那其实呃很多很多人有有在欧洲有很多点都是有可能有很多资源回收的的东西，那大家可以来这样利用。那他们就促成了一个。呃，社会的系统，然后就是这样子的，已经使用过的资源可以重复的利用。那所以
呃，在我们现实就是平常的日常生活里面，大家都是一直有一个呃交换的概念，就是我付出了什么，我希望得到什么。比如说我做出了工作，我就希望得到钱。那可是，在这样子的系统里面的话，大家的思维是说，呃。呃，家就是要用来住的，学校就是用来教学的，所以没有真的在想说，我想要以物易物，或者是以什么能力换到什么东西，所以我们要去重新建构一个大家呃对于整个思想的思维。那所以当然第一点还是说，我们还是要尽量降低整个活动办理活动所所花费的经费。那第二，这是整个参与的社群，其实大家也会想办法要去呃可能游说啊，那游说政府啊，游说私人机构，让他们可能有一些赞助或者是加入。那我们去一个呃比利时的一个小城镇的例子，就是大家想要去探讨说，究竟呃比利时或者是欧洲的这样子的呃社会上的不平等，这样子贫富差距是来自于哪？那其实这个贫富差距并并非他们研究的结果，并非来自于可能是贷款，并非来自于像这样子的呃可能对于银行借贷这些项目，而是来自于继承，因为有的人可能继承了很大笔的呃的遗产，那他们可能就会变得很有钱。那相对来说，呃没有钱的人或者是没有遗产的人，就是持续。呃，就是没有遗产。那所以呢，他们就呃提出了一个计划，就是说，呃，希望在当地的村镇的每一个人，一人都捐出一个呃，就是一平方一平方公尺的小非常小的土地，然后免费的免费的提供，就是如果有有能力的，有这些继承有继承财产的遗产的人都可以提供出像这样子的一小块土地，让他们可能可以进行利用，然后办活动。那他们就像是政向政府提出了这个。这个计划之后，那政府就觉得很好，这是一个很好的计划，所以他们就政府也说，我愿意提供呃两万的两万平方公里的土地，然后他们也有向私人企业呃进行游说，那私人企业一样有相同的赞助，那就是这整个过程是一个呃就是进行游说，然后进行呃就是提出计划，这过程才是最重要的。那当地就是有呃八。哎，这种，哎，这种。那这边有呃八，这这个城镇其实是非常小，大概只有八万人。可是如果大部分人都可以捐出一一一平方公尺的土地，那其实就是相当的多。那所以就是他们造成的，就是就是。可以促成的这样子的活动，或者是他们可以获得这样的资源，都是大家自愿的。那所以当然就是钱还是一直以来都是个问题。那呃，当然明天明天的演讲可能还会更深入的去探讨说，究竟呃钱会造成什么样的问题，或者是说这些钱究竟要从哪里来。然后呃，基本上就是大概是这个样子。现在。Other alternatives are also um, uh, sharing economy. Yeah, so you see, uh, well, we'll probably all know boat surfing. It's one thing, but it's also literally sh sharing uh, uh, studios. Uh, instead, every artist has his own studio. Right? So that there are things which which makes it much more cheaper. Um, and for example, in Europe, it's very. Ten years ago, in Europe, every family had its own car or even two cars. Nowadays, I share uh, um, with uh, 20 families one car. Uh, so there's a huge difference and shift in, in, in thinking. Also, we have this kind of and it's not commercial thing. Uh, um, um, companies who organize this kind of sharing economy also. <coughs> but it makes things much more cheaper and also ecologically much more uh, responsible. So you see also in the market itself common in principles. Uh, uh, but I, I will talk about this uh, tomorrow, how, uh, yeah, how they, um, um, how there at least is an overlap also between common in principles, markets and government. 那当然，同样近几年也有这个共享经济的兴起。那包括在欧洲，可能很多人就是他们有工作室，艺术家之间的工作室，那会大家一起共同使用，那就可以减少很多呃这个经费上面的需求。那可能在十年前的时候，在欧洲，可能每一个家庭他们都有属于自己的车。那但是到了现在，可能每二十个家庭才拥有一部车。那所以其实共享经济的出现，让整个呃。就是可能生活所需的花费可以降低，那当然我们也出现了一些呃企业开始呃来做呃来提倡共享经济这件事情，那可以降低所有事情的成本，那也让我们对于这个社会是呃付出一份责任，然后呃所以这也是就是我们的我们的
整个市场开始与现在的我们提出的这个共享共同的概念开始有吻合的地方。那当然，明天也会再进一步的来谈。Okay. Yeah, but this is specific service school, but it can be also uh, uh, healthy food uh, as a need. But people uh, feel that that they can buy in the shops not any more healthy food, so they start gardening again. Just to say other examples, this is just one need in this place where they had this need, uh, but it, it, uh, it's, it's a good thing. Fun, but, uh, because they confronted. Because, for example, about schools, uh, I, I mean, li literally primary schools, eh, well, which uh, they also built. Uh, it was built because uh, parents were there. They had uh, a lot of children, and they could not uh, go in the neighborhood to the school. So there was a need. Eh? Or they, for example, what you see. Um, Another need is what you see more and more is these uh, uh, traffic jams. Too much cars. <laughs> That's uh, 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 um, at least there, there is an ecological need, but there is also the need to get in time on your work, uh, etc. So they start rethinking about how can we reorganize our transport. Do we need to have more public <coughs> transport, for example? Do we need to share cars? At least to have less cars. Yeah, but for who is the first person who proposed this? Uh, most of the time, there are people who are in the traffic then, <laughs> who at a certain moment they said, "No, it's enough." No, um, and, and they start talking with each other. Of course, that's uh, it's not always with an emotion. Shit, again, <laughs> in the traffic jam. That's that's what I have. People get frustrated, etc. And then they they look around them and they say, oh, I'm also in the same situation, and they start talking about that. So most of the time it happens like that. But it is really it needs to be. That's very important. I think that's why your question is also important. It needs indeed to be real needs, because otherwise it's fiction. Uh, uh, a lot of things are invented uh, as as. as Advantage needs <laughs> um, uh, to the make consumption better, etc., or stimulate consumption. But it is really people at a certain moment have they have really the feeling no, it does it cannot uh, uh, go on like that. For example, we have in, in, in Antwerp a lot of action because we have not uh, not good cycling paths. And why was it? Because a lot of children were killed in, in accidents, and parents start to say, "Hey, come on." has to do something so it's really starting from that kind of emotion but also a need you really feel so no no fictional needs or something like that that's really that you, you have the feeling you need uh, uh, like you need paint to paint and say that you don't have it anymore then you have to do an action <laughs> to get there it's very simple like that yeah. mm -hmm. 呃，刚刚讲者前面讲到的那张图其实有关系。你一开始有什么样的情绪，然后大家就是会开始反思，然后就开始要互相讨论。所以一定是遇到问题的人，他有情绪，然后他到后来去开始跟大家互相讨论，然后发现大家群就是群聚的，就是可能周遭的人都有一样的问题的时候，然后他们就会发起这样子的行动。所以我想他刚刚这边讲的东西，应该是有呼应到他前面讲的东西。对对对，所以就是比如说呃。嗯，每天塞车塞车的人，然后就会有一个人出来提这个问题，那他就会跟他周遭的人去讨论说，是不是每天塞车大家都迟到没有办法上班，然后可能很多人都提出了一样的问题，然后大家有共同想法，大家就会提出，就是就是想要找一个解决的方案，然后才进行组织，所以应该是跟前面是有互相呼应。Maybe another example, which is, yeah, uh, for example, in in uh, um, 
I um, lectured a lot in Turkey, uh, and they, at a certain moment, they saw there that there is no uh, uh, free press anymore, so that they are not informed well about what is happening with the government, etc. So people start to make alternative magazines on the internet, etc. So it starts again there from a completely other need, which is also a need, uh, need for information, correct information, uh, etc. So it starts also there from the anger also, because <laughs> uh, this kind of stuff. 那就举另外一个例子在土耳其的有一个地方他们也是一样就是要求就是觉得说当地什么都没有免费的媒体然后就是他们没有办法完整的了解到说政府是怎么样运行以及他们做了哪些事情所以他们就提出了一些替代的方
the whole cultural sector um, uh, distributes the subsidizing money, uh, money uh, herself. They do it by an assembly, so that means that everybody who says, I'm an artist, or I'm a, a theater programmer, or whatever, they come together once a year, and they get an amount of money of the, of, of the government, so they say, this is, this is for you guys, but for the rest, organize yourself and share what you want. So they have huge discussions. You need the money, I need the money, etc. But they share it every year like that, and they get a completely other system. So there's a very, uh, how do you say, auto-regulative. They, they, they regulate uh, themselves. So uh, what I wanted to say is, is uh, first of all, there are a lot of those organizations with, with, which uh, at a certain moment get out of the illegality. They get regulated, uh, but there can go things a lot wrong. Government can take over and say, I know we are going to regulate it, then it's over, uh, the game. Uh, or the, uh, the government uh, can accept it that, and that is what Zagreb, for example, uh, happens. The, the government says, we have some conditions. You need to distribute it democratically. Uh, no racism, for example. It's constitutional laws, almost, uh, in it. But for the rest, we trust you. And you have to just to show that you organize it like that, but you organize it yourself. So it exists, yeah, uh, but it is still in the margins again because when you look at uh, jurisdiction, we have only private law and we have public law, and there's almost nothing in between. But we are a lot. A lot of governments also are experimenting with that. We work also with three lawyers who um, uh, give us advice. Um, uh, to change regulations, uh, um, uh, also on, on, the, yeah, on, the, on the level of, of the national, uh, on the national level. Uh, so, but yeah, it is still in the making. <laughs> a lot of those uh, processes. So, Bologna is the code of Bologna, of the code of the commons for Bologna, which is a regulation for all the city uh, to regulate the commons. So they exist. Is that an answer? I don't know, not completely. Yeah. Uh, but do you, uh, in your opinion, that, uh, in the end, legalize is uh, illegalize is uh, is a certain process, a certain agenda to achieve? I think so. Yeah. You think so? Uh, especially to um, define for two things, I think. Uh, to define uh, the role of the government. So the government still has a role, it's very important, uh, especially for regulation. So, um, for example, uh, Michel Bones is one of the guys who, who everywhere in the world uh, discusses this kind of comments. Uh, he, said, he talks about the partner government. You need a partner in it to, uh, to define. Uh, and also, I, I especially to say what is the, what is whose responsibility in it, uh, and what is also the border where stops the government and where starts the commons. This is also important. But also to um, to uh, defend against commercialization and uh, against the market. Uh, I mean, not nothing against markets, uh, but uh, uh, especially kind of speculative. Uh, profit market uh, organization, uh, you need also regulations uh, of self-control uh, in it. But I, I will talk more in detail tomorrow what exactly then are the conditions uh, for such a commons of regulation uh, and, and commons management also. You need also management. So it's certainly never, it's not anarchy. It's certainly strict regulated because otherwise it does not function. Certainly not. Sorry. 
然后是不是能够呃，是不是这是合法化是最终的图，最终的目标是不是这个样子？那当然，我们讲者的回答是说，当然还是会依情况而定。那但大部分都是。那我们举一个意大利那不勒斯的当地的一个例子，就是有一个场馆，那它就呃有一个表演场地，它是有三个很大的呃表演平台。那当他们那个地那个并没有一个确切的组织在进行。呃，管理，然后他们只是一个横向的，然后大家合作起来，然后一起来呃维护这个表演的呃环境。那他们其实，在当初因为占占了一个比较蛮大的空间，那所以其实他们就也有请律师，然后来写，就是可能是写出相关的，包括是法律的呃。呃，条文，然后去进行申请。那政政府看到了以后，那也是认同了、认可了他们所写的东西。然后最后也是慢慢的就是逐逐逐渐的升级，然后让它到可能是呃法律的层，就从原本可能只是一个规定，然后后面变法律的层次，然后到到了可能大家都适用的情况。那所以这是一个从由下往上的过程。然后所以就是呃在进行活动的时候，常常也是就是会有律师的参与。那同样我们举这就是。呃，那当然，第一就是说，呃，那还有举到另外一个例子，就是有一个呃文一个文化的中心，那他会负责就是去分配政府的的分配下来要给呃可能文化文化产业的人或者艺术家的资金，那他们就是每一年会有一个大型的集会，然后他们就进行许多的讨论，然后就去进行分配资资金的分配，那呃，他们要。就是不不论是哪一个例子，那大家都是想要想办法，就是要，呃，当然有有的人，有的人最后有的组织最后可以脱离，就是说他们没有，他们就是已经属于合法的阶段。那有的组织可能在中间申请的过程，或者他们写的写的东西不被政府接受的时候，可能会有事情发生，那可能会可能是政府接管啊，或者是整个被解散这样子的情形也是有的。那可能政府有时候会提出特定的呃。呃，条款就是说，可能你们的组织要遵循的什么样的规定，那你们就可以在某种程度上面的是自治的情形。所以，呃，但是也要也要提出也要提出相关的证明，就是告诉我们说，你们有进行有达到这些规定，然后进行这样子的运作，然后就可以让你们进行自治。那包括像刚刚提到的那个呃文化中心，他们去分配资金，就是有这样子，可能就是政府给予他们相关的条件，那他们就进行自己的分配这样子。那当然，这个中间有很复杂，那包括还有就是可能是呃，公法律跟司法律的问题，然后所以大家都其实都会会寻求呃律师的建议。那其实不论是在怎么样的过程，那我们刚提到非法或者合法的过程之中，其实政府永远都是扮演一个很重要的角色。但是政府并非是从这整个过程之中消失，而是我们要想呃选择去与政府成为就是一个伙伴的关系，然后呃。呃，那去做的事情可能是比较像是在与整个市场机制进行抗衡，然后来达到自治，然后达到就是可以让整个活动运行这样子。谢谢大家。接下来有没有什么问题？有什么问题可以问？那我明天还有第二场的讲座，下午一点半一样在这个教室。不过回去之后，大家发现有什么疑问的话，明天还有机会。那今天我们谢谢巴斯卡精彩的演讲，谢谢大家。谢谢大家。谢谢大家。谢谢大家。